For this AITA episode, a young man was adopted as a baby, and somehow, his bio parents found out where he lives, and contacted him to demand he donate bone marrow to his sick birth father, and says they're going to sue him if he refused. Now let's read this saga. Original Post I, 17 male, am adopted. My birth parents weren't able to care for a newborn, and I ended up in foster care because of it. I was adopted by my family when I was two. I have a very happy life, one I likely wouldn't have with my birth parents. About a month ago, my birth parents got into contact with my family. Long story short, my birth father is sick and needs a bone marrow transplant. They are on a waitlist but haven't heard back just yet. I am the only child they ever had, and odds are I am a match. Pretty much they wanted my parents to get me tested and then donate my marrow to him. My parents told me that it's up to me, and after some thought, I said no. I don't know them other than they gave birth to me. They have had no part in my life whatsoever, and now they suddenly need me. Well, they send my parents a nasty message saying they can sue to force me to donate my marrow. I do feel a little bad, but I feel like this isn't my problem. Am I in the wrong here? Edit, sorry right after I posted, I went to the store with my mom. Just wanted to clear up some things I read in the comments. I have no contact or anything with my birth parents. From what my parents told me, I was put into foster care when I was less than a month old. That is how they got me and they decided to adopt me which was finalized when I turned two. I have four siblings and I have a great life. They told me when I was old enough that I am adopted. But outside of that, I had no idea who my birth parents were or what they even looked like. Someone said I should do it because what if I need medical information, want to get to know them, or something like that. Yeah no. I have no desire to get to know these people. None. I have no desire to seek out grandparents, cousins and uncles. I don't want to know if some form of rare cancer runs in the family, because they are not my family. I haven't spent 17 years of my life with them. Why would I want to get to know them? Edit 2. For those of you who keep saying, you should reconsider it. How about you donate to him? My parents told me to think about. I thought it, and the answer is no. No, I'm not doing it. That's it. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not wrong, I'm no doctor, but I hear donating bone marrow can be a very risky procedure. I almost burst out laughing in the freaking office when I read they'd sue you to force you. They'll be laughed out of court, assuming they even get that far. When I signed up for the registry, I was told that now there are two methods to donate. The most common method involves removing the marrow from your blood, and is the same as any blood donation. It is very easy to sign up by the way. There is a website where they will send you a swab. You swab yourself and put it back in the mail. Not wrong, I donated bone marrow to my sister five years ago. It was no small thing, I had complications with the surgery, couldn't walk for two weeks, and other things. It was really, really painful. I was going to give you sort of a pep talk about doing it anyway, since you would be potentially saving a life, even if it's the life of a complete stranger. That was until I read the line about how they threatened to sue you to force you to donate. That's the most tragically hilarious thing I've ever read. You cannot force a person to undergo a voluntary surgery. You should call their bluff. Indeed not wrong, especially after the suing part. Wish them good luck with that, they didn't want you then, they won't have you now. Also, went through the procedure as well. I raise you're not walking for two weeks, with bordering needing a blood transplant, not being able to work for over a month, and having to take medication to get my hemoglobin levels up again for months. I also couldn't lift my own baby for weeks, aside from the not walking. The pain meds also barely worked, so the pain was horrible for well over a week before it got bearable with paracetamol. Took much heavier ones before that, as if they were candy. I now have 14 scars on my lower back that I still feel sometimes. It's been well over a year. Surgical donation is no joke. And the dialysis one is not exactly a ride in the park either, thanks to those meds you have to take beforehand. Not wrong. How dare they threaten you like that? They gave up all rights to you at birth and are now still not wanting a relationship just for you to undergo a medical procedure to save his life. Way to go guys, they could have asked to meet you so they could plead their case, but they went nuclear. Ignore them. Now for the first update. It's early, I'm getting ready for school between typing this. Read more comments this morning and again let me clear something all. My egg and sperm donors didn't lovingly give me up. I was taken. My parents don't know the exact reason because that information was never released to them. They were just told, and I quote, it wasn't a good environment for a child. I was taken. Even if they had given me up, doesn't mean I owe them anything. Not like I asked to be born like every freaking child on this green earth. If being born means I am suddenly in debt to them, I would have been the slowest sperm you ever seen. I would have happily raced into a sock. 
Y'all can be a bunch of hypocrites. In one breath you say there are kids in foster care who need a home. Well, I was a foster kid who was given a home by two loving parents. Then in the next breath you are saying what about your family? I have a family. They have raised me for 17 years. Medical history. Some very helpful people have privately messaged me to let me know that in 2021, I get all that stuff without ever having to speak to these people again. Ever. Amazing how far science has come, right? I'm going to be showing this to some of my friends today because I have to admit, I'm over it. It's not my problem if this man dies. And again, some people have pointed out in the comments, odds are, I wouldn't be a match anyway. And he has been luck getting a donor off the list. And it will be faster than waiting on me to get tested only to be told I'm not a match anyway. And again, with those on your hill screaming, well, wouldn't you donate to a stranger? I donate blood mostly because it gets me out of PE class. I like donating blood. If someone receives that blood, then congratulations. I put no more thought into it besides that. Even if they had come to my parents and said, hey, you adopted our son, and well, we need a favor. Sorry to ask blah blah. My answer would have still been no. I did my own research and found plenty of stories of kids who were used like gold mines for their genetic materials by their parents to save their siblings or a family member. And that is all they were to their families, someone who had the right match. I don't owe them anything. I don't care if she spent 8 hours in labor with me. They aren't my family. I have a wonderful family who are supporting me right now. Also, my parents are working on finding how the heck they even knew where I was. Because my adoption was a closed one. They had their rights terminated when I was taken. They shouldn't know anything about me. I don't know if they are contacting a lawyer or anything. I know they are pretty upset about all of this. I have to get to school. Later. Now for the second update. I know this is long overdue. I started college, life in COVID put things on hold for a bit. Long story short, I didn't donate the bone marrow. My birth parents started harassing my family on the regular, texts, phone calls, letters, showing up at places, resulting in calls to the police. They were arrested. My adoption had been closed, but they used some shady private investigator to find me and basically just showed up on the doorstep demanding my bone marrow. My family did press charges. As of right now as far as I am aware. They are still sitting in a prison cell while they wait for their day in court, as things are still delayed due to the cough. I guess my sperm donator's illness wasn't that serious or he got a donation. I don't know. Anyway, just thought I would update this old post. I'll answer questions if you have them. That is it. Edit. Someone asked why I was taken. Honestly, I still don't know the full story nor do my parents. They said they asked but never got the full answer. The answer they told me was someone called the police and told them to do a welfare check on my sperm and egg donator, complaining they constantly heard a baby, meaning me crying. Meds may have been involved, which my parents think so. I was placed in foster care and from there I was adopted. Why did they find me? My father feels they wanted money, and the bone marrow story was just a lie. We only base this off of the fact my sperm donor seems fine. We don't know if he got the bone marrow from someone else or whatever but we think the story was made up in order to harass us and get money from my parents. We aren't rich, just middle class. My mom has her business and stay-at-home mom, while my dad is an electrician. Did I ever sign up to donate bone marrow? No, I did not. I'm not comfortable with that but I still donate blood. What about genetics? I haven't gotten tested for anything of yet. Other family? I don't care. During that time, someone reached out to me on Facebook claiming to be an aunt. I didn't reply the message. Honestly, I don't blame you for your decision, as all of your points are valid. They didn't have a right to do what they did, morally or legally. Hope you enjoy life at college. Jail most likely, because they haven't had their day in court yet. Nonetheless, great update. Have a great time in college OP. The reality is, the moment they started harassing or pressuring you, you didn't qualify as a donor, at least here. Donors must be 100% voluntary without any pressure. I'm glad your parents protected you. I went back and read the original post, where people are saying what about your medical history? That's the weakest reason in the world for a donation. You can get a medical profile that covers most things these days through DNA testing, if you wanted to know badly enough. Good on you for sticking to your guns. Good luck in college. Fun fact, at his age, he didn't qualify from the beginning. Sperm and egg donors were trying to con him, or his real adoptive parents, in some way. Minors donate bone marrow to relatives all the time. Siblings are frequently the best match for obvious reasons. We allow toddlers to donate even if they are too young to understand what's happening to them, as long as the ethics committee signs off on it. If you're just googling and not involved in medicine, you probably saw that the minimum age to donate bone marrow is 18, 
which is true for stranger donation and services like Be The Match. There is risk to the donor and not much benefit to the donor in stranger donation, and so a donor needs to be an adult to consent to the procedure. For siblings, there is risk, but there is a benefit to having a sibling live and significant downsides to having a sibling die, including both the direct impact to a young child of losing a sibling and the impact to a young child of having grieving parents. The death of a child has a huge impact on the entire family, which changes the calculus of the risk or benefit of donating bone marrow. That's why minor siblings are allowed to donate to each other and to their parents, but minors aren't allowed to donate to stranger. Now for the last story. Am I wrong for refusing to let my brother meet my son after what he told me at my husband's funeral? My late husband passed away from a car accident when I was four months pregnant. It's been difficult without him, but my family did so much to support me, and I moved in with them month after. At the funeral, my older brother asked for a minute to talk, then asked me if I really wanted to go through with my pregnancy. I was shocked when I heard this, but even more shocked when he suggested that I make the right decision, not an emotional decision, and reconsider having my son. He gave many reasons why, including the fact how single or widowed mom are considered too much of baggage for so many men to date. I lost it on him and kicked him out. That was the last time we saw each other. My son is now three weeks old. Whole family met him and were happy to welcome him. My parents asked if I could let my brother come meet my son even for a few hours. I refused, but they said I was making a mistake robbing my son of a future loving relationship with his uncle. They asked that I don't let my emotions dictate a decision that might have a lasting impact, but I said no. My extended family got involved and started pushing, especially after my brother started insisting saying my husband was a dear friend of his, and what I'm doing right now would make my husband upset if he saw it. Am I being bitter and selfish? Now for the comments. Not wrong, every time he says how much of a dear friend he was. Remind him of that talk at his dear friend's funeral. Heck, remind the whole damn family of it. Repeatedly remind them all, until your child is old enough to understand what you are saying. Not wrong at all OP. Remind him that he didn't want you to keep your child, so he should just imagine or pretend that you didn't. And that he called this child baggage. Not wrong, you don't have to allow anyone in your child's life that you don't want to. That includes family. Your brother said some pretty awful and tactless things, while you were still at the funeral of the father of your child. I'm assuming he also hasn't bothered to apologize, but still feels he is entitled to have a relationship with your son, and has no problem emotionally manipulating you in order to get what he wants. Yeah no, you're not in the wrong here. Tell your extended family that the discussion is closed and anyone who brings it up again will not be seeing your son for a long time. If and when you want your son to have a relationship with your brother, you will let him know. You don't have to allow anyone in your child's life that you don't want to. That includes family. This, also, I say this as someone who loves my nieces with all my heart, but uncles aren't actually that big a deal. Most kids could take or leave their uncles, even if those uncles are heavily involved in their lives. It's not like you're depriving your children of some quintessential childhood experience by not bringing a particular uncle around. Absolutely agreed, and that's from a guy whose uncle played an essential role in the makeup of who I am today. Uncles play the role of broadening a kid's horizons, whether that's as small as showing you hobbies that your parents don't have, or as big as introducing you to political ideologies that you otherwise might not encounter until years later. Uncles can have little impact on your growth, or big impact. And if you feel he will have a big negative impact, you have every right to hold off contact, until you see clear evidence that he's examined and fixed every last awful piece of himself.